What's going on people? My name is Antoine. This is ATM Tech and welcome to the channel. So I think it's fair to say that Samsung's Note series has been on a bit of a roller coaster the past few years. From when the Note series first came out, you could always bank on the fact that every year there would be a new Note. Things started to get a bit weird when they brought out the Note 5 where it was only released in some parts of the world whilst the rest of the world received the S6 Edge Plus. Then Samsung decided to skip the Note 6 and go straight to the Note 7 and well, the Note 7 turned out not so well. Then with the Note 10, Samsung decided to switch things up by bringing out two variants, the Note 10 as well as the Note 10 Plus. Then they followed suit with the Note 20 with the Note 20 and the Note 20 Ultra. And kind of since then, we've just been waiting. If you were someone who decided to skip the Note 20 because you were waiting for the next Note, you've probably been a bit frustrated the last year or so. And the thing is, all this time, Samsung were really blurring the line between the S series and the Note series because the similarities were getting smaller and smaller with each iteration. Then with the S21 Ultra, they really threw a spanner in the works by giving it S Pen support. And of course, in 2021, there was no Note, with Samsung opting to announce the Z Fold 3 and the Z Flip 3 around the time of the year where there usually would be a Note. And with Samsung going all in with foldables, it kind of begged the question, where does that leave the Note series? See, the thing is, this is the S22 Ultra, but really, it's the Note 21, Note 22 however you want to call it. Now, I suspect this is the Note phone that Samsung wanted to release in 2021, but due to international chip shortages, I think they decided to make a decision and doubled down on the fold and took a chance on not releasing the Note that year. And it seems to have paid off because Samsung are really flourishing in the foldables department. And I think that made it an easy decision to call it a day on the Note series and integrate it within the S lineup. I can't iterate it enough, this is a Note. First of all, design-wise, it looks nothing like the S21 or the S22. And it just happens to have the same design as the Note 10 and the Note 20. This square body and sharp corners are absolutely unmistakable. I mean, it's even got an integrated S Pen. This is a Note, no matter what you want to say. So I've had the S22 Ultra since launch and I have been using it as my main phone with the SIM card in there ever since then. Now let me just get all the specs out of the way and I am going to read them from the screen because I can. So it has a 6.8 inch dynamic AMOLED 2X display, adaptive high refresh rate screen that refreshes from 10 to 120 Hertz, 8 gigabytes of RAM with up to 8 gigabytes of additional virtual RAM which you can take from the phone storage, 128 gigabytes of storage, and I know there's going to be at least one person that's going to ask the question, I'm from the UK, I have the Exynos version. This is the Exynos version. Okay, moving on. So it's got a quad camera system with an ultra wide, a 3x zoom, a 10x zoom, as well as a regular wide, and of course front facing camera, 5000 milliamp battery, and of course that integrated S Pen that we all love. Performance is great, battery life is great. I'm not a heavy, heavy gamer. I'm not gonna sit and play Genshin Impact or Call of Duty for hours upon hours. So I can't tell you about thermal throttling or drop frames or anything like that. What I can say is the phone does everything I need it to do at a good pace and I don't have to wait on the phone. Battery wise, I would say it's good. It's more than enough for me. It can get me through the day with no issues. The only time I'm ever really reaching for a charger is if I've had a heavy binge session, particularly TikTok. It, the battery really doesn't like TikTok. Talking, I can lose 15% in like 30 minutes just swiping through. So that's something I do need to be mindful of. But if I was a light user, I could probably get two days out of this day and a half, no problem. But I'm a moderate user. So by the time my day is done, I'm looking at about 30%, which is more than enough. Now this phone does support 45 watt super fast charging and I made another video where I did a test comparing 25 watt charging versus 45 watt charging and spoiler alert 45 watt charging is no faster than 25 watt charging which is actually a pretty big disappointment. There has been firmware updates and Samsung did release a new version of the charger but none of those things have made any difference. It's a really weird one. I know these days people are chasing wattage numbers when it comes to charging so maybe Samsung just needed to mention that it can support 45 watt charging but if you're considering forking out for the 45 watt charger over a 25 watt charger sad to say it's not really worth spending the extra money now if you're talking a 15 watt charger versus a 25 watt charger then you absolutely get the 25 watt charger but 
don't make the jump from 25 watts to 45 watts. You do get 50% charge in 20 minutes, which is nice, I suppose. And to be fair, majority of people are charging their phones overnight. If you're charging throughout the day, you probably just need a little top up. And if you can get to 50% in 20 minutes, that's probably enough to last you for the rest of the day. So one thing that makes a note to note are generally their big ass screens and this phone has a very nice big ass screen, 6.8 inch with high refresh rates. The thing that's funny though, Samsung have been putting really good displays on their phones for years now and I'm kind of running out of things to say about them, to be honest. It's bright, it's vibrant, you can adjust the colours and saturation to suit your liking. The high refresh rate is a godsend but Samsung have been doing it for a few years on a lot of their phones now so it's kind of a given and a standard but I think for now we've kind of hit peak screens on phones until one they can figure out how to get the power consumption down so we can use 4k screens without killing our batteries and two if they can really master under display cameras because they have an under display camera on the Fold 3 and it's not good so yeah it's not ready for flagships just yet. So I am treating this phone like a Note and it would be weird to review a Note without talking about the S Pen but the amount of Note users that I speak to that don't actually use the S Pen, it's ridiculous. And I'm one of them, funnily enough. Now don't get me wrong, every now and again, I whip out the S Pen and make a quick little note on the always on display. But with the plethora of features that the S Pen has, I'm probably only tapping into about 5%. One thing that Samsung did touch on, which I have noticed, is that the latency of the pen is virtually nothing. In previous phones, there was a noticeable delay between your pen touching the screen and the mark appearing on the screen. But now the delay is so negligible, it's basically not there, which makes the writing experience a lot more natural. And for those that use their S Pen for art or drawings, I imagine it makes that experience just all that more accurate and realistic. Realistic, yeah. But I don't want to exclude those people that do make use of the S Pen features. So if you've had a Note 9, 10, 20, all the Bluetooth features and gesture features, this s pen does have so it is a true fully fledged s pen it has a tiny little battery that's built into the s pen that powers all the bluetooth features and that charges right back up every time you put the pen into the phone if or when that battery dies whilst you're using it you will lose the bluetooth features but you can still use all the writing features because that works via electromagnetic stuff which doesn't require any power doesn't require power or doesn't require battery Either way, if the battery is dead, you can still use the S Pen for your basic S Pen features. So I mentioned earlier, the S22 Ultra has a quad camera system, and I'm gonna save my thoughts for a separate video where I'll do a deep dive of the whole camera system. But one thing I will say is that 3X and 10X optical zoom really come in clutch. Now, I've never really been a huge zoom user in general, because obviously, generally in the past, when you zoom, it's a digital zoom. But the fact that you can zoom in up to 10 times with no loss of quality, is really handy at times. So as I said at the start of the video, I have been using this as my main phone since it came out and I do really like it. There's only a couple things that stop this from being a perfect phone for me. And these are things that I stop it from being considered a true Note successor. And I fear it's more of the direction that Samsung are choosing to go in. So there's two things and they are related. The first is onboard storage. The base model for this phone starts at 128 gigabytes of storage. It's not enough. I'm sorry, it's not enough. Samsung have been putting 128 gigabytes of storage in their base models for a few years now. We're kind of getting to the point where 256 gigabytes of storage needs to be the entry point for phones that are this expensive. I smart switched onto this phone and my memory was full already. Yes, you've got cloud storage and cloud solutions, but I like to have my data on the phone. And then that kind of compounds into the next problem. For whatever reason, Samsung have decided that SD card support is no longer necessary on their flagship phones. Now, I'm sorry, but Samsung aren't Apple. iPhones have never had expandable storage and that's fine for iPhone users. People are used to paying extra for extra storage. But one thing that Samsung has nearly always had going for them is it was kind of a given that their phones would have SD card expansion. And to be honest, the fact that you can pay $1,200, $1,300 for Samsung's best phone and it not have expandable storage, but I can buy Samsung's cheapest phone and it can span storage up to 500 gigabytes or a terabyte. There's something just, there's a, a disconnect there. I know Samsung are in the business of making money, but when you've got loyal customers that are used to a certain thing and they buy that brand for a certain reason, you're gonna irk some people, myself included, unfortunately. Don't get me wrong though, I do really love this phone. I've Other than storage, I haven't really had any issues with it whatsoever. And I do recommend it to people. 
one question I have been getting is, should I get the Note 20 Ultra or should I get the S22 Ultra? And the answer to that question is, it depends. Now, I have both and actually, this is the first time I'm realizing that these two are kind of accent colors of each other. Obviously, S22 Ultra, Note 20 Ultra. And to be perfectly honest, they feel like the same phone. Um, so it's kind of hard to say which one you should get. I mean, if price if, if if price is a factor, then you're probably able to get a better deal on the Note 20 Ultra. Um, if long-term support is a factor, then obviously with the S22 Ultra being a newer phone, it's going to have software updates and software support for longer. Um, the camera is better on the S22 Ultra. I was never blown away by the Note 20 not 20 yeah not 20 ultra camera i was never really blown away by it but the not 20 ultra has 256 gigabytes of base storage and it has expandable sd card support so it's kind of uh. all i can say is whichever one you go for you won't be disappointed and although one is a note and one is an s they're both really notes and on that note uh, thanks for watching the video if you enjoyed this video make sure you like and subscribe and i'll catch you in the next video peace